Escúcheme, cuídate. Listos, vámonos. Suerte, vamos. Tony Weeks, there with the instructions in Spanish. Pretty good. That's what we talked about earlier tonight. What we like to see. What some of these referees are doing here in Mexico. Is there Alberto Ruiz? We'll need all of his boxing skills here tonight against the power punching Rafael Marquez. Now Marquez has faced good boxers before and sometimes falls behind in his fight time. He's, he's faced some of the very best. Sometimes falls behind, but his punch bails him out later. He's a slow starter. He likes to study his opponent. And that's where they take advantage of that slow start to build up the leading points. But like you said, his punching power, Amanos, uh, I mean, Rafael Marquez's punching power. 28 knockouts and 31 victories. So we know he can definitely punch. First good punch was uh, Ruiz left up to the body. Ruiz trunks hitting like a walking billboard. Apparently picking up his uh, endorsement money. <laughs> the only thing missing is uh, what some boxers now do is uh, have the logo of a casino on his back. I can do without that one. Ruiz has also faced good fighters. Oh, yes. As a matter of fact, you mentioned Ricardo Vargas. He also has a victory over a bronze medalist in the 2000 Sydney Olympics, Clarence Vincent. He fought and he beat NABF Super Flyweight Champion Trinidad Mendoza, as well as former WC Bantamweight World Champion Rick, uh, Victor Rabanales and Jorge La Sierra. So he's no slouch. Yeah, that's a good lineup of uh, opponents. In fact, they both fought Victor Rabanales. But Marquez is fighting against Victor Robinales. It's kind of a funny story because Robinales had already been world champion. He's a great veteran, a very hard guy to fight anyway with his awkward style. And Marquez actually made his professional debut against Robinales. He was 38 or 39 at the time, I believe. It's ridiculous. And Marquez thought that it was an exhibition fight. <laughs> And he ended up getting knocked out by Ramadales. I mean, it was, a, it was a crazy match in terms of experience. You just never see anything quite that bad. And, of course, he didn't have a chance of hanging in there with, uh, with uh, Ramadales at that stage in his career. Although I'd pick uh, Rafael now. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Rematch, oh. Since Ramadales is probably pushing 50 by now. <laughs> and the other loss by knockout on Marcus's record is against Renato Garcia in Denver in November of 2000. We'll talk about that in the second round. Yes, Very quiet first round. Probably the better punches, though, thrown by Marquez. So use your strength. Yeah. 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 We get ready now for round two. And here they come with the IBF. Bantamweight yeah. championship on the line. The champion, Rafael Marquez, in the black trunks. And the challenger, Roberto Ruiz. In the gold trucks, Jaime Mota, my partner, which we're out of here at ringside. And he gave round one to Marquez. I thought uh, Ruiz had a slight edge, so we'll have a violent disagreement over that. But it was a quiet first round, to say the least, no matter who had the edge. Good exchange there by both. Like I was saying last, uh, last round, 
Marquez also lost by knockout against Genaro Garcia in 2000, precisely in the second round. But it's not like he was really down and out. He was knocked down, and instead of getting up real quick, he turned to his corner, and he looked at Nacho Garcia, who told him to take it easy and take his time getting back up. By the time he looked back at the referee, the referee was already on nine, and when he tried to get up, the referee counted him out. So it was a little bit controversial. It's interesting, I can remember the same thing happening to Rafael Morales a few years ago when he got knocked down in the fight and looked over at his cornerman, Joe Goosen, who was waiting for him to tell him to get up, and then Joe told him to get up, and he got up with a count of 10. Exactly. <laughs> with a ref told 10. He was fine, sitting there on one knee, which is waiting for the chance to get up. But they waited a count too long. I'm sure Marcus won't, won't repeat that if he ever touches the canvas again, and if he's in condition to get up, he'll get up right away. Good combination of the body by Ruiz. I really was impressed with Ruiz in that fight with Ricardo Vargas. And I thought he's, you know, he's going to be a quality opponent here for Marquez. And like you mentioned, Marquez is a little bit of a slow starter, and Ruiz is taking advantage of that. At least in this second round, he's probably gotten up a lot quicker, connected to better punches. Well, the same thing happened, Jaime, when he fought to Tim Austin. He fell behind in that fight. Tim Austin was really a terrific champion. He was a big favorite over Marquez the night that they won the title. But I tell you, you are blessed if you're a fighter uh, who is possessed of a punch like Marquez has, because you're always in a fight. Oh, yeah. Even if you're way behind, you still have a shot. And that was a TKO by, by Rafael Marquez over Tim Austin. Marquez's his first fight with Mark Tushar Johnson was interesting. He blew Tushar out the second time they fought. Round three turned down. The crowd doesn't like it. There's a lack of action here. Marquez is not going to begin to open up. We'll tell you about that Mark Tushar Johnson fight next round. But we're going to go through two. The judges are going to have to pick between these two guys and not much going on. Because of one of the last scorecards, they're really going to be wrapped in the first few rounds. In the first few rounds, they're going to be wrapped in the first few rounds. They're going to be wrapped in the first few rounds. They're going to be wrapped in the first few rounds. They're going to be wrapped in the first few rounds. They're going to be wrapped in the first few rounds. They're going to be wrapped in the first few rounds. They're going to be wrapped in the first few rounds. They're going to be wrapped in the first few rounds. Después de cerrar, Rafa, porque no le dejas margen a él, así que teniendo más acción en el público. So maybe, after hearing those words, Marcus, let's lose a little bit here in the third round. Nice jab for Marquez there at the beginning of the round. Mentioned that fight with Mark Tushar Johnson, the first fight that they that they fought. It was a good fight, very, very close. Could have gone either way, and they announced in the ring that Mark Tushar Johnson was the winner. That's but, right. But afterward, they started totaling up the cards again, and they suddenly discovered that two mistakes had been made in the cards, and that actually, Marquez was, uh, when, when they did their correct addition, the Marquez had the edge in points. And Marquez, after leaving the ring dejected, and Johnson leaving the ring to the cheers and having won the crowd and taken the bows, uh, an hour and a half later, Marquez, gambling in the casino, was told by the commission, hey, you won. <laughs> you won the fight. <laughs> That's how he found out. It's not quite like having your hand raised in the ring. Let's Come listen on. to Tony. Keep him up, okay? Well, it's a warning. Right. No Listo. point deduction. Just a warning. But you heard Nacho Verstein tell him, take your time, take your time. Oh, 
Listo. Okay. Here we go. Time in. Pull that lip That's right. You know, that's probably the best punch of the fight. And obviously, that's all it takes. Here it is. He's able to sidestep a left hook by Ruiz. Comes underneath with the uppercut. And you see his eyes sort of rolling to the back of his head. Ladies and gentlemen, here at the MGM Grand of Las Vegas, this contest comes to an end at 2 minutes 11 seconds of round number 3. The winner by knockout victory, and still the IBF Bantamweight Champion of the World, is Silva de Mexico. 